In this lesson, we will review the muscles that participate in the formation of the thenar group of muscles. So let's begin by looking at a superficial dissection photograph of the palm of the hand. This is the hypothenar eminence down here at the base of the little finger. And the thenar group of muscles are what form the thenar eminence over here. And in order to understand the thenar group of muscles, we will look at it in a diagrammatic representation. And these muscles are also arranged in two layers, like in many other anatomical locations. So let's begin by looking at this line drawing. And this is really the base of the uh, right thumb. And the area that is magnified is this particular area, the area of the thumb and the adjacent digits. In the first image, which is on the left side, we can put in the flexor retinaculum over here. So this is the flexor retinaculum. And attaching onto this flexor retinaculum and the adjacent bone is the first muscle of the thenar group known as the abductor pollicis brevis, or APB, uh, sometimes in abbreviation. This muscle attaches distally at the base of the proximal phalanx as shown in the diagram, and is innervated by the median nerve. The second muscle of the thenar group is known as the flexor pollicis brevis, sometimes abbreviated as FPB. It's a much smaller muscle, but has a very similar location and attachment extending from the flexor retinaculum onto the base of that proximal phalanx. And so this is the flexor pollicis brevis. These two muscles form the superficial part of the thenar group. And it's this muscle, the flexor pollicis, is also innervated by the median nerve. If we remove these muscles, then we are, we are able to see the deeper muscles. And I'll show that in the diagram on the right-hand side. So let's again put our flexor retinaculum in place, which is over here. And note that these superficial muscles that I just described have been removed and we can now see the deeper muscle, which is known as opponent's pollicis. And it's a muscle that will have its attachment from the flexor retinaculum onto the metacarpal. So it does not cross the metacarpophalangeal joint. And so this is the opponent's pollicis, and this is also innervated by the median nerve. The opponent's pollicis is not visible in a superficial dissection and has to be uh, exposed by either removing the superficial muscles of the thenar group or by cutting them away. There's one other muscle that is worth mentioning here that te technically does not belong to the thenar group, but if you are reviewing the anatomy in this area, you will certainly come across this muscle. And it is known as the adductor pollicis. It's a much larger muscle than the opponent's. It is also in the deeper area, and it extends from the uh, metacarpal of the middle finger, as shown in the diagram, and goes on to the base of the proximal phalanx, as shown here. It's not part of the thenar group, but it does have an action at the thumb, and therefore it's worth mentioning here. And we can confirm, we know that it's not part of the thenar group because its innervation is also different. It is in fact innervated by the ulnar nerve. And it's an important innervation of the ulnar nerve, and sometimes in clinical testing, for ulnar nerve injury, we actually test for the action of the adductor pollicis. Similarly, when we suspect a median nerve injury, we will often examine for the abductor pollicis brevis and look for its action and examine for any atrophy of this muscle at the base of the thumb as part of that thenar group of muscles. So these are some of the muscles that are at the base of the thumb the three that participate in the formation of thenar group and the thenar eminence, and then the fourth, the adductor pollicis, really in the depths of the palm of the hand. Let's look at these in a dissection photograph. The left side photograph here is a superficial dissection. It's a close-up view, and it is seen uh, showing the base of the thumb. And we see the first muscle here, which is the flexor pollicis brevis. This is the flexor pollicis brevis right here. And it's a much smaller muscle uh, in comparison to the other muscle, which is in the superficial thenar group, the abductor pollicis brevis, which is seen here. These two muscles are clearly visible as part of that superficial arrangement. 
Note also, very clearly seen in this close-up view, is a branch from the median nerve that is known as the recurrent branch. The recurrent branch of the median nerve supplies these muscles and is an important innervation that needs to be identified in anatomical dissections. If we look at the right-sided photograph, these muscles and nerves have been removed in order to expose the deeper muscles. There's a little remnant of the opponent's pollicis, but not much of it is visible. What we really see is the adductor pollicis. And so all of this muscle is the adductor pollicis, which is seen here. One can see its more transverse fibers, as well as its oblique fibers. And the adductor pollicis also goes on to its way to attach onto the base of that proximal phalanx. We see a little bit of the uh, opponent's pollicis in this area down here, uh, but not very much of it is visible. It has been removed in this deeper dissection. One other point uh, of note is, are the uh, cut tendons, the cut tendons of the long flexors which, that, that are seen over here. Note that there are two tendons going into the index finger in this case, uh, and we'll look at these in detail in a subsequent lesson.